we keep if we keep sharing the word. That's right. Eventually, somebody will want to catch hold to the word. Amen. Amen. We got to keep uh, sharing the word. Uh, thank God, for He watched over us on this day. Kept us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger, seen and unseen. And in spite of us, God has blessed us and kept us. And so we have an expectation to give God thanks, to give God praise. Uh, we've got to be mindful of that these are the last days. Now, we say it all the time, but we don't really understand that these are the last days where people are, are literally calling right wrong and wrong right. Uh, literally. And people don't like for you to preach and teach the truth of God. And people become angry when you talk about God's holiness. And most people can't stand to hear the truth of God preached or taught. Uh, and so we find ourselves dealing with people who are not friendly towards us. And uh, they really don't want to receive. It's not you, it's what God is speaking through you. So we can never take the rejection personally because people don't know any better. So we're not, we're not moved by the rejection of the word of God because most people just don't know. And it is unfortunate right. that they don't know, but it's not my fault that they don't know. Uh, and so when they don't want to know, there's nothing you can do about that. But if perchance they want to know, then it's our responsibility to share the truth of God Amen. With the world. Amen. So that's our job. That's right. Uh, to share the truth of God with the world. Thank you, Lord. Uh, now, the, the standard of holiness is difficult for most people to accept because people are going to uh, disrespect you when you insist that holiness is right, uh, they'll make you question God, question yourself, thinking there's something wrong with the way I believe because you're not going to find very many people who are going to agree with God's word. Uh, and so you have to know better and know that uh, and let, let Make yourself yourself understand that if everyone agrees with you, there's something wrong with what you're saying. And so when you talk about the righteousness of God and not you're right. not being rejected, then let me assure you that is not the righteousness of God. People hate the righteousness of God. All right now. People don't want you to talk about the righteousness of God. And when you talk about God and his righteousness, going to encounter uh, a whole lot of opposition. Amen. Now, uh, let's, let's go. I'm trying to find a scripture. I was just reading it. Reading. I was confused by it. Uh, I, I want to say it's uh, Acts chapter 17. In Acts chapter 17, now we know of the conversion of Paul. Paul was a Jew, a Pharisee, called himself Pharisee of Pharisees. So he, as a Pharisee, he was, he was uh, a member of the small group of laymen, is that right? Yes. Huh? Yes. Who were committed to Judaism. Judaism. And they were very committed to Judaism. And so Paul was of that number. So they, they were the protectors of their religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. Uh, and, and here Jesus 
meets up with Paul, or Paul meets up with Jesus on the road to Damascus. And his encounter with Jesus results in his uh, transformation. Uh, he accepts the revelation of Jesus. Of course, when Jesus appeals to you directly, you ought to have enough sense to accept his, his revelation of who he is and accept him as Lord and Savior. And so uh, Saul at the time uh, accepted Jesus and was, was obedient to Jesus and to go to the, to, uh, the one, the man named Jude uh, to his house and God sent Ananias to where he was. Is that right? Yeah. I think that's right. Uh, that part's not the most important part. The most important part is that he heard the word. He was obedient to God. Uh, he waited for Ananias to come and to lay hands on him. And when Ananias laid hands on Saul, Saul received his sight. And the scales fell from his eyes. And uh, he was, he received the gift of the Holy Ghost and he was baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. So now we have a problem because everyone who knew Saul expected Saul to be a hater of Christians. Uh -huh. and they expected Paul, or Saul, to be a Jesus fighter. Right. But after his encounter with Jesus, uh, Saul chose to follow Jesus. And in his choosing to follow Jesus resulted in a lot of enemies. And so all those who once respected him came to despise him. And those who once feared him because he hunted down Christians, the Christians still feared him <laughs> because they did not believe that Jesus had called Saul to do a work for him. And so when he would go around initially, folks would still be afraid because isn't that the Saul who killed us? How are we going to trust this guy? And so he had to be spoken for by some of the other brethren, some of the other Jews saying, he's all right. He's all right. He changed. God changed him. Yes. And so when you've been changed by Jesus, you don't do the things that you used Amen. to do. Amen. That's right. That's so right. So whereas pre-Holy Ghost, uh, Saul sought to kill the people of God, when he received the gift of the Holy Ghost, he saw life in all men. Uh, that's how God brings about change in our lives. But... Saul encountered issues because when you begin to live, speak, preach, teach all that God instructs, natural man begins to reject you. And so people turn their backs on you. Amen. It's, it's, it's amazing how people just do not like the preaching and teaching of God's holy standard is just rejected. People just don't like it. Uh, that's, it's, it's a sad commentary, but it is a reality. Amen. People just don't like God's truth. And so, uh, as a result, as a result of people rejecting God's truth, when you carry God's truth to people, they in turn reject you. But again, you have to process that they're rejecting God. That's and right. Not rejecting Amen. That's you. right. But as you begin to do God's work, things are going to seemingly fall apart for you. And so you have to have faith in God. Faith that God truly called you to do what you say God called you to do. And faith that God will sustain you 
in the midst of all that he has called you to do. So when the enemies come against you to discourage you, to frustrate you, to destroy you, you have to know that God is still present with you. Uh, because again, this message is just unpopular. It's something that's not going to be readily accepted by the world. That's what the Bible says. That's our reality. We live with that. And so when we uh, are rejected by men, uh, we don't take it personally. Uh -huh. uh, and you should not let it affect you, quite frankly. That's right. Amen. Don't, you don't get upset because uh, folks that try your, your faith the Chanel talking about when her godmother said came to pick her up. Now, think about this. Her godmother knows that she is mm -hmm. changed, right? right. Yeah. But she still came with her music, right? All right. So, for you to stay saying you got to leave your godmother alone because she has no respect for you and no respect for your God. When I'm holy and you know I am and you do the opposite of what I believe, then that means that you don't have respect for me. But more importantly, you have no respect for my God. So you got to choose who you're going to serve. Either you're going to fool with your godmother or you're going to fool with God. But when you're around her and she does ungodly things and knowing about your change in lifestyle, then you are guilty of disrespecting God. Why would you expose yourself to people who have no respect for the God that you serve? Y'all understand? Yeah. Y'all hear me? Y'all see I'm fool with folks, right? Don't play with nobody. Because you don't let nobody disrespect God. We're not going to disrespect my God. No, we don't do that. And Sorry. if you have to do that, then guess what? We can't be friends. Understand? I don't Amen. care. We can't be family. I don't care who it is. But when you, when you put yourself out there that way, you know, for me to have to sit around, I'm, I'm only going to fight the fights that I have to fight. What music I listen to shouldn't be a fight. Now, when I have a choice, I don't have to get in your car. <laughs> you don't have to come to my house. So that's not a fight that I'm willing to fight because I don't have to fight that fight because I ain't got to get in your vehicle. You understand? Yeah. You got to take me nowhere. God will provide a bride for me or it'll happen when he gets it ready, but I won't be going with you because you want to play that stuff, you want to smoke, you want to cuss, cut a fool. That's not my lifestyle. Huh? Just think about it. If somebody doing crap, you don't get in the car with them? No. Because for you, that's illegal. So we get caught, I'm going to go to jail, right? They smoke on a joint, and I'm going to get in the car. Y'all got some, some weed in here? I'm not getting it. Why? Because we just stopped. Uh, I, don't, I ain't trying to go to jail, right? But it's all sin. So if they practice sin, you leave them a home. That includes your family. It includes your mother, your father, your sister, your brother. And it includes everybody. If they practice sin and they disrespect the God you serve, when you fool with them, you've chosen them over God. He told us to come here from among them and be ye separate. separate. Right? Other thing is that they disrespect you, which means you can never win that soul because you let them disrespect you. you come around me cussing and acting a fool and playing the music you want to play and all that, and you know I don't do it, you still do it, you're telling me I have no respect for you. And I'll never win you to Christ. But when I reject you, says so, so I don't you let me out. I don't need you to take me anywhere. Why would it's all right. No explanation. That's okay. God bless you. Leave him alone. See, now you're getting something to think about. Otherwise, you get nothing to think about. That's a joke. Did God say you're serving. Well, you say you don't you say you don't listen to it, but I'm planning, you sure listening to it. But you chose to stay. You didn't have to, right? So you compromise your ability to be, a, to be an, an effective witness for Christ. But when you shut it down. That's right. Amen. No. no I'm not getting in that car. No. I appreciate when you come to our house. Don't have a music blast. Respect our house. They ain't got to do it being saved. Don't come in front of my house. Give music blast. Okay. Especially when you grown. What? Ain't no fool like a grown fool. So, you know, you got your little 18, 19 year olds, you know, come up and they got them in the blast and yo, man, cut it out. All right, they're, they're teenagers. Somebody fully grown, they walk around and they're riding around with the music blast driving to your house with the music blast. Something wrong with their brain. Okay, I'm just telling you, I'm too they're stupid. That's what that is. That's a, that's a, a sign of stupidity. Yeah. Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. So when you, when you, when you deal with a fool, you'll become a fool. A fool. Leave fools alone. There's nothing I need the devil to do for me for me to compromise my holy walk. Yeah. Nothing. I'd rather starve before I compromise Amen. his walk yes, in Lord. Christ. Yes, Lord. No, it's okay. You can worry about it. No, I got a choice in this thing. It's okay. God bless you. I'll see you later. I'll be here. After a while, I'll pop it down. Leave him alone. That's how you stay safe. You need a devil. Devil alone. Once they say, leave the devil alone. Amen. You want to fall? Keep playing the devil. But the devil keeps throwing imps to constantly chip away at you. He'll 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 send he'll send his uh his little agents in all kinds of ways and situations, people, all stuff, throw it all at you. Chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. You'll find yourself weakened. Because you let all that filth to get you. Y'all hear me? I don't care who it is. I don't care who it is. Your own family. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. If I hang around my siblings and all they do is cuss, we can't be friends. I hang around you. All y'all do is get high. Well, guess what? I'm not hanging around y'all. If I live in a house and all y'all do is play boogie woogie, I got to find me a place to live. If I don't have to say so, if I got to say so in the house, you're going to cut the mess off. But if it ain't my house, I can't control what, what, the, yeah. what the sounds are. But I sure can control where I go. That's right. I'm not going to sit in this squalor, this, this spiritual squalor. I'm not going to sit in this filth, uh, compromise of my salvation. Because remember now, all that music and all that stuff, all those things are spirits. All that cussing, all, all of that stuff is spirits. Amen. So the devil's always coming at you with spirits. But you think it's people, but they're spirits. They're coming for you. So you, you don't, you know, you don't fully appreciate that uh, uh, these are spirits coming against you because you're looking at flesh and blood. That's right. But those spirits are attacking you. So you have to know that and reject the devil. So you've got to make a choice. Either, uh, either you stick to holiness. Or not. Anybody who you let compromise the standard of holiness, you let them compromise the God you said you serve. Amen. Amen. <laughs> See? And they'll never have respect for you. They're going to respect me because I'm putting the devil in check every time. I give, the check, I give the devil zero passes. I put the devil in check every time. Don't play with my God. Period. When it comes to holiness, 100% holiness. No compromise on my turf and on my, on my uh, uh, grounds, on my uh, conditions. No compromise. I don't need your money. If I got to sell out holiness to get your money, I'll let you. If I, if I got to go through that to get a ride, I'll let you. See? I don't need your job. If I got, if I got, no, you can keep all your stuff here. You gave me this, take it back. You can have it all. I don't need none of it. Understand? Amen. Because we say we walk by faith, faith in who? God. Okay. Amen. So we walk by faith in Him, then my God shall supply all according to the riches. Amen. Amen. Understand? Amen. Play the devil at all. I don't care how old the devil is, how young the devil is, what gender the devil. Don't play with the devil. Period. And if you think I'm disrespecting you because I'm telling you not happening in my life, that's going to be your problem. It sure is. Well, I'm wrong. Like you are. When well, act like it. Yeah. But I'm not. No. No. That's not what I'm. I just want. I don't, I don't have to be with you. I'm going to be at your house. What's well, what we do? Fine. I'm not trying to change your house. Bye. I'm not coming over. Plain and simple. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to through nobody's house to appease them. That's right. I owe you nothing. I owe Jesus everything. Everything. Amen. So if I got to compromise Jesus to appease people, they just gonna be mad at me because I ain't having it like that. Get it? Get the devil alone. 
They haven't got respect for you. And they show you that, cut them. Wing yourself, cut them. Put them in check. They were like, she ain't black, for real. Sunday school, Sunday at. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah.